All right, good evening. Welcome to the February 10th, 2020 count City Council meeting. I'll now call the meeting to order. Okay, uh, <coughs> Council Member Moore, could you please lead us in the flag? Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Council Rokoff. City Clerk, could you please take roll? Mayor Sestarsik. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kalmik. Here. Council Member Vera Papa is absent. Um, Council Member Moore? Here. Council Member Masalavit? Here. Could I please get a motion to excuse Council Member Verapapa's absence tonight? Yeah, motion to excuse Verapapa's absence. I'll second. second. Okay. Um, all those in favor, do we need a vote or? Is your microphone on? It's red. Seems hard to hear, sorry. Hard to hear? Okay. Maybe just I'll get closer. a little closer. Thank you. Okay, so do we need to vote or is that consensus good enough? Yes, can we get a motion to approve his okay. um, absence, please? Okay. Yeah, motion to approve. approve. Council Member Moore and seconded by I second. Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, uh, approval. And you can just take a voice vote on that, Mayor. You okay. can just, all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, approval of agenda and waiver of full reading of resolutions <coughs> and ordinances uh, by motion of the City Council. This is the time to notify the public of any changes to the agenda and or rearrange the order of the agenda. Does anyone want to pull a consent calendar item? Okay, City Clerk, do we have any supplemental communications? Yes, three communications were received regarding various agenda items that were distributed to City Council and made available to the public. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I uh, have a motion and a second to approve the agenda? Okay. Second. <clears throat> okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Presentations and recognitions. Special recognition of Patty Blake, former owner of Blue Moon, a philanthropic boutique. Patty Blake, College Park East resident and owner of the Blue Moon Philanthropic Boutique is closing at the end of February after eight years of business. Since opening in March 2012, she has donated over $200,000 to over 80 hardworking and deserving local charities. Just to name a few, Seal Beach and Los Alamitos charities include Helen Sanders Cat Paws, the Youth Center, Brain, Grateful Hearts, Pathways to Independence, Life for Kids, Autism Partnership Foundation, We Care, Seal Beach Animal Care Shelter, and the Los Alamitos Library. On behalf of the city of Seal Beach, thank you for making a difference in our community and the lives of so many. Now I'd like... Um, former uh, school board member Lorraine Navarro and executive officer of LAIF, Carrie Logue, please to step up and say a few words. Good evening, Mayor Sistarsik, fellow city council members. I'd like to start off by thanking you for your public service as a citizen of Seal Beach. I appreciate the little recognized work that you do. But we're here to honor Patty Blake. Um, there's so much that could be said, but I just would like to say that in a world where we have nothing but clone malls, big box stores, Amazon Prime, we had for eight years Blue Moon Boutique, a philanthropic boutique started by maybe God whispering in Patty's ear, that there was a mission for her to do and a place like our Mayberry by the Sea, a place where we could go, anybody from Opie to Aunt B, 
go shopping, meet your friends, always be greeted by your name. Fabulous clothes to buy, gifts to buy. It was my very first place to go. And what a wonderful opportunity for not only the vendors who were sometimes representing um, people who were coming out of homelessness and women's shelters. It wasn't just the Nordstrom stuff off the rack. It was all very thoughtful. And more importantly, this was a place that Patty engineered for community feeling and giving back to community. And I think to be recognized for the amount of money that she's donated, as you said, I think $200,000 over eight years, that's not nothing. That's a big deal. And I don't know how many other places can boast that. So Patty, you're a hero. <laughs> you really are. And I just want to say that for those eight years, brief years, we had a little Brigadoon in Blue Moon. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Good evening, City Council. I'm Carrie Logue. I'm the Executive Director of LAFE, the Los Alamitos Education Foundation, and also a resident of College Park East. Um, and it's my pleasure to be here. And I thank Lorraine Navarro for bringing this to the attention of Mayor Sestarsik and to my attention also, um, and how important it is for all of us to pause and just thank the amazing Seal Beach citizen, Patty Blake, for her philanthropy through her business. And so I just wanted to take one moment, and if you represent a nonprofit that has benefited from Blue Moon, can you wave? Wow. I, <laughs> so, LAFE was fortunate to be the recipient of a percentage of monthly sales at Blue Moon two times over the past several years that I've been the executive director of LAFE. And it brought me into the shop. And through the experience of helping to promote that um, give back, if you will, for LAFE, I got to see what a great boutique it is and um, became a very frequent shopper. And like Lorraine, um, it was my first place to go for gifts. And I too just appreciated that not only did a percentage of sales go to a nonprofit, but the types of goods that she stocked in her shop had so many philanthropic ties. So it, you know, it was um, people recovering from um, what's the the nice word for prostitution now? <laughs> Human trafficking. Thank you. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and just very, very unique gifts. And um, it's just been a pleasure to know Patty. I know that she'll still be around and still be active in our community, but her heart is huge and she has impacted the children of Los Alamitos Unified and so many others through her generosity. So thank you for recognizing her and Patty, thank you for the amazing work you did for all of us. Thank you, Carrie. Now I'd like to introduce Meg Catulli, who is a board president of the Los Alamitos Unified School District. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, Mayor, or good evening, Mayor Sudarsik and council members. I am here because the school board also wants to thank um, Patty for all of her work. Um, we say frequently that it takes a village to raise a child. And I always think in the back of my head, but it kind of depends on who the villagers are. And I think we're very, very lucky in Seal Beach to have such outstanding human beings who think of people other than themselves and do something about it. It's really easy to have an idea, but to actually take action on it is what is really impressive. So on behalf of the school board, I have a certificate that congratulates and, con and commends you for your amazing support of nonprofits and everyone in the community. We're gonna miss Blue Moon, but thank you for the years. Yeah. Was, was there anybody else that wanted to come forward and say anything? Oh, okay, we have somebody, all right. Patty is amazing, and um, I honestly cried when she told me she's going to close the store because the amount of goodness she's done for the community, for the most in need, is tremendous. 
Patty is one of a kind. Once in a blue moon, we get people like this, and honestly, she's one of those people. And um, we have a little something for you, and we put a leaf in the order of blue moon legacy, a little leaf on our um, donor tree that's gonna be there forever. So thank you so much for giving back, and good luck in your new adventure, and we will miss her a lot. If you wouldn't mind coming on up here, and the city would like to present you with this uh, recognition Aww. for all your years of hard work and, and charity, and uh, we just want to congratulate you and wish you a happy retirement. Enjoy that. Randy. I'm going to. <laughs> Public speaking, not my gift. So, but there have some important words to say. Um, this is really such an honor. I am emotional. Um, but Blue Moon was a uh, very unexpected blessing in my life. Um, it most certainly would not have been possible without the support of my family and my friends and so many others in our community. Um, we do have a generous community. And I was inspired by a boutique where my daughter went to college in Tennessee who did a similar thing. And I thought, we live in such a generous community and city that I go, I don't think anyone else is doing this. And then the opportunity presented itself at this little, you know, kind of older center over by our house in College Park East. And it's just, it just worked. <laughs> but I'm grateful for my family for tolerating the constant distractions <laughs> that come with running a retail business, especially at the holidays. Yeah. So thank you for that, putting up with me. Um, I'm forever grateful to my dedicated and unwavering staff, loyal throughout it all, and passionate about our philanthropic mission. Um, and um, we were blessed to partner with so many amazing local charities. You mentioned uh, a lot of them that are here, and um, also I wanted to mention the Children's Dental Health Clinic, which um, also, they just, there's so many people doing amazing things. <laughs> um, anyway, um, we're thrilled to be able to donate to all their worthy causes. And I have so many wonderful memories and friendships made over the last eight years. I will treasure them always. This is just a really nice surprise. Thank you, everyone. This is, whoops, I got to make sure I get the right one, no wrong one. Um, this is from Assem Assemblyman Tyler Deep. He could not be here tonight. His office couldn't be, but uh, he had a oh, recognition for Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Next, I'd like to uh, call up uh, Robert Aguilar. Sure, sure, sure. We have a... We wanted to thank you for your service for the last three years on the Planning Commission and for District 2. And we have a, we have a recognition for you from the city. Thank you. Okay. And also, Tyler Deep left one for you, too. Uh, they, he couldn't be here, but uh, we wanted to congratulate you and thank you right, thank so you. much. Okay. Thank you very much. Three 
I believe uh, Tom has, um, Mr. Councilman, Councilman. I just wanted to say, Commissioner Robert Aguilar has volunteered his time and energy to provide an important service to the city, and in particular to the residents in District 2. I very much appreciate his willingness to serve and help our city uh, study and implement policies related to planning. And I wish him the very best in his future endeavors. Thank you. Oral communications. At this time, members of the public may address the council regarding any items within subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the council cannot discuss or take action on any items that are not on the agenda unless authorized by law. Matters not on the agenda may, at the council's discretion, be referred to the city manager and placed on a future agenda. Those members of the public wishing to speak are asked to come forward to a microphone and state their name for the record. All speakers will be limited to a period of five minutes. Speakers must address their comments only to the mayor and the entire city council and not to any individual member of the staff or audience. Any documents for review should be presented to the city clerk for distribution. Have anyone? Okay, Joyce. <clears throat> Joyce Frost Parquet, Old Town Seal Beach, 50 year resident. Seen a lot. <laughs> and um, so I, um, I'm really concerned about this police, this jail, because uh, the money that's being received, but they, I wanted transparency and I requested how much money was being spent on the security guards, uh, detention guard from the city of police department, police department, uh, meals a day, doctors or nurses, and uh, telephone calls. Those are all expenses that we pay if they don't pay. And where are these prisoners coming from? Are they coming from a jail, from another city that doesn't want them? Or are they paying themselves? They're supposed to be paying. So I'm, re I'm really concerned about that. And that you're not going to give me that information. Come on. <laughs> Police departments are having to give all sorts of information up and down the street. Title 15. Well. I'll have to go back and read the papers of the police departments that have to come forward and give all kinds of information, including the one about stress, the, the threat reports. I've asked for those too. So we have to remember why are we here? We're a charter city. It's your duty up there to represent the taxpayers. And I don't know if you're doing a good job when it's always contract, when we have all these contracts of people have to tell us what we're doing, what we're not doing. They can't keep a, they can't keep the, a, a real estimate of anything. This police report, remember what the guys that did the police report said? Close it down. Taxpayers shouldn't be having to pay for that. And what will it cost us for insurance if one of them gets out? Remember, it hasn't been that long ago that one did get out. So I'm really concerned. I want transparency. You said you would give it. Remember, at the last meeting, I talked about when you had to answer the Brown Act, but it was too late. But the other problem arose when you hired a lady, uh, Diane, was that her name? a friend of yours, 
on a contract. And the first thing he did after she got her money was go out and get, got somebody to bid against a good restaurant owner for the beer restaurant. She bid against someone. <laughs> and the facts came out that she did that on purpose because you wanted $50,000 of non-refundable money from the lady that bid against the restaurant. And um, since then, she never did what the fire department wanted. They wanted water. So now we have no restaurant. We have no restaurant at, down at, at River's Inn. Why? Don't these things take attention from you? I mean, there's been a lot of things done. Well, I made a mistake about last week about the, 70, uh, the $700 an hour attorney. The reason that $700 an hour attorney came up because her, the lady she hired was a friend and their picture was put in the paper. They were in Alaska. So that $700 an hour, she had to go down to the DA's office and read pages and pages that she would be more transparent. There's nothing about that city of Seal Beach values. Excellent consumer service, mutual respect, teamwork. Well, who's the teamwork for? Who's the teamwork for? We have no restaurant at the pier. How much money have we you lost? You have 30 seconds remaining. How much money have we lost on that pier in Rivers Inn? How much? Can come up, someone come up with a figure? Why not? But anyway, <clears throat> I will be back. I want the police report. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, City Council and staff, Robert Goldberg. Um, I did submit several pages of questions and comments to you uh, over the weekend, but I just want to ask one here this evening, and that has to do with item G, um, which is the grant of easement to uh, Southern California Gas Company and the OCTA related to the 405 project. And specifically, um, I had a question regarding the um, financial impact statement in the staff report. The staff report says, I'm reading, as a result of the city's grant of easement, OCTA will pay the city $114,000 plus reimburse $5,000 in appraisal costs. There are no additional costs to the city with the exception of some permanent minor impact on subsurface use of the property. Um, what the financial impact section doesn't mention in terms of costs is our legal fees. Um, through the last, through July uh, at least, I was able to tally up $24,000 in fees, itemized non-retainer fees that we were charged. Now, the notice that OCTA wanted to take some land for an easement, that notice was sent to us back in 2017. So I don't know exactly when our legal fees started. As I said, from July through November, it's 24,000. Now, of course, we may have fees in December and January and maybe February also to add to that. Um, but I'd like for someone to ask the city attorney to give us um, at least an estimate of what the total fees are. Um, because we clearly we're not going to be getting $114,000 net. Now, there's also this question of the $5,000 appraisal cost, which is gonna be reimbursed. And I don't know whether that is part of the $24,000. It, it might be because the appraisal was ordered by the city attorney's firm because I have a copy of it. And so the $24,000 may include that $5,000. Um, but that also is a, is a question I have as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak at oral communications? Okay, seeing none, I will close oral communications.
Okay, we'll move on to a city attorney report. No report this evening, Mayor, thanks. Okay, thank you. City manager report? Yes, Mayor, thank you. I have a couple items tonight. First of all, I wanted to recognize our division, OCFA division chief, Ron Roberts, who's in the back row. Um, he was awarded on Friday night as the Orange County Fire Authority's division chief of the year um, at the Orange County Fire Authority's best and bravest awards. So Chief Roberts just wanted to say congratulations and very well deserved. Thank you for your service. The other item I had was just a reminder um, for the council and the community. We have um, the first of two upcoming public outreach meetings on the community pool project, the first of which will take place this Thursday, February 13th at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers, and then um, Saturday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. at the Maga Pool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll move on to council comments. Councilmember Moore, did you have some comments? Yeah, um, can we respond to the legal fees for that item G question? Sure, as the, I mean, first of all, as the council is aware, and as you've been briefed, the city agreed with OCTA as part of the settlement of the I-405 lawsuit to pay, to um, handle all the property acquisitions that OCTA needs through an appraisal process and the parties would um, exchange the uh, appraisal information and OCTA would, would pay the appraised value. Um, Dr. Goldberg's um, information, I guess, is um, somewhat incomplete in that, as the council is aware, the city is discussing multiple um, property acquisitions with OCTA. This just happens to be the first one that has come forward to the city council. Um, there will be others. So the billing that Dr. Goldberg referenced is billing for all of the property acquisitions that we are discussing uh, with OCTA and not just the gas company matter that's on the agenda this evening. Um, in fact, uh, that billing includes legal fees as well as all the costs that the city is incurring that are coming through our office and being rebuilt without any additional markup um, paid, on, paid on behalf of the city. So more than half of the $24,000 figure that he um, quoted a moment ago was actually um, costs that we have paid on behalf of the city and then rebuilt. So the actual attorney's fees, I think, excuse me, are um, somewhere in the neighborhood of ten or eleven thousand dollars for all of the acquisition uh, discussions that are underway at this point. Should should we include that when we ask from OCTA? That that's not the agreement. The agreement was that the the, the parties would um, come to a an appraised value for each piece of property, and um, that would be the the amount that was paid. If we go through the eminent domain process and negotiate a settlement, we wouldn't recover our attorney's fees anyway. So that, that was the agreement that the city agreed to back when we settled the lawsuit. Okay, thanks. Did That's you have, it. Do you have anything else? Okay, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> I uh, attended uh, my first meeting um, of the San Gabriel and Los Angeles Rivers Conservancy, the RMC, and it was very fascinating to learn about the process and the number of projects that the Rivers and Mountains Conservancy is involved in. And um, uh, again, my hope is to have the Rivers and Mountains Conservancy, which has done some amazing projects in the Los Angeles River portion. Um, to focus some attention on the San Gabriel River, which hopefully could include dealing with the trash problem. Even though they don't necessarily fund trash removal per se, um, part of the mandate is to um, have the waters be safe and be clear of pollution. And so that that's one of the ways that I'm hoping to sort of leverage our way in. Um, I did have a comment by the executive director um, that 
yes, we, we should be focusing some more attention on the San Gabriel River. So we will see how that shakes out. I also ran into um, uh, State Senator Tom Umberg and mentioned what I was trying to do in that regard, and he said he reminded me that um, the San Gabriel River issue is very much in, you know, on their radar, and he's very concerned about seeing that, that something happens. So we're just going to keep plugging away and get more and more people um, involved by nodding their head, and uh, maybe we can have a, an outcome that uh, you know, we will all appreciate. Um, just for information, um, in case you haven't noticed, the Naval Weapons Station has sort of changed their focus on their work project uh, because of the unavailability, I think, of the, the big uh, dredge. They had to stop working on um, the channel that will be going, that will be taking the uh, personal boats in through Anaheim Bay and into um, Huntington Harbor. And so the, what they've done is they've come over to what they call the North Mole, M-O-L-E, which is if you ever look down that way or if you live just over the fence, they have their, their beach. And where their beach is, it continues out into the middle of Anaheim Bay. Well, they're going to be lopping off a, a big portion of that, and so they're starting to work there. So they're moving all those massive boulders you know, that line the, uh, the jetty and the channel and uh, digging out the, uh, the dirt, which they're going to move over to the north, the southeast corner, um, where the bridge goes into Surfside, and store it there, and then that'll be used to, when they um, work on the other portions. So I just wanted to keep you up to date on that. And uh, to reinforce what the city manager said, encourage your neighbors and your friends, and if you're watching at home, you know, come out if you have any interest at all in our project uh, regarding the community pool, aquatic center, whatever you want to call it, um, to give your input, to hear the information so everybody's working on the same page as to what we're talking about, what is being proposed, what you would like to see happen, because that's the only way that we're going to come to a conclusion that will have input from as many people as possible. So I, again, I want to re restate that again. And uh, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Masalava. Uh, well, I attended the um, Mosquito Abatement District meeting. And by coincidence, a representative of the mosquito abatement was at a meeting in Leisure World. And you know, half of, I represent half of Leisure World. And um, I was glad to see them there explaining my mantra of dumping the water out of your dishes under the pots of your, your plants. And... Um, I suggest that whoever is listening and is interested to go to uh, Orange County Vector Control webpage and take a look at what they have to offer and some of the explanation about why this is a really important thing to do. Uh, the other meeting I attended was the um, Operations Committee of the, Senate, the Orange County Sanitation District, and that's the committee that spends all the money and uh, we did, and um, there are very many big projects that they're doing, and most of them internal, of course, with their machinery and replacements and keeping their equipment up to date and um, in compliance with uh, federal reg regulations with uh, contamination. So, um, it was an interesting meeting and spent a lot of money. I, I'm always so astounded at what the bottom line is for them. Uh, we all pay that on our tax bill, and um, it's really important what they do because we don't want that stuff coming up through our shower. And um, that's about all I have. Okay, thank you. 
Um, I attended uh, the uh, meeting of the Golden Rain Foundation. I want to thank uh, them for inviting me to come and uh, lead the flag salute. It was very interesting. Uh, they have <laughs> quite a quite a complex uh, uh, governing uh, system there, and it, uh, I enjoyed uh, seeing what goes on. So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I also attended a regional military affairs committee meeting, uh, hearing what's going on in the Joint Forces training base, and I attended the Garden Grove State of the City. Uh, I also, along with uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, met with the uh, commanding officer and uh, public information officer of the Naval Weapons Station to talk about things there. And uh, I attended a uh, Los Alamitos Unified School District working group meeting. Uh, they are also interested in what's going to be happening with the pool. So a lot of pool discussion going on. Uh, and uh, I had a resident ask me to come over to the uh, Seal Beach Tennis Center to uh, meet their pickleball group and just see how popular pickleball is. And, uh, uh, they're very excited and uh, happy to spread the word about pickleball. So thank to, to them for inviting me. And uh, I had a meeting uh, in preparation for the strategic planning meeting coming up in a month or so. So anyway, that is my, my meeting. So thank you very much. Okay, now we'll move on to council items. Uh, item A, City Council appointment to the Planning Commissioner, District 2. Is there a staff report, City Manager? Yes, Mayor, thank you. What I'd like to do, since Dana Ingstrom is here as our Deputy City Clerk for the meeting tonight, is give her an opportunity to present an item. So I'll turn this item over to Dana. Okay. Thank you, City Manager. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. District 2 Planning Commissioner Robert Aguilar, Jr. resigned from the Planning Commission on January 16th. The city clerk's office posted the required notice of vacancy on January 17th, and tonight before you, Council Member Moore is requesting the appointment of Rondi Winkler to the Planning Commission as the representative for District 2. Rondi Winkler has a long history of volunteering and serving on many boards of nonprofits. She has served as the Golden Rain Foundation treasurer since 2018 and a resident of Leisure World since 2006. That concludes my staff report, and I'm available for any questions. Yeah, just um, I'd like to say that over the past several years of attending events in Leisure World, I've had the opportunity to get to know Rondi and can attest to her integrity and commitment to our community. She's currently the treasurer, as mentioned, on the GRF board and was previously the GRF president, where she has been an outstanding steward. She is actively involved in Leisure World and has made a real positive difference in Seal Beach. As planning commissioner for District 2, I know she will take the time to listen to residents and represent the district well, because that's what she has been doing for so many years in Leisure World. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other Can comments? Say sure, me. I must say that I am delighted that you've appointed Rondi Winkler. She is so capable, well qualified, and um, I've seen her work in Leisure World. I know that she has a much broader spectrum than just Leisure World, because District 2 is outside the boundaries, and um, she has a real sensitivity for people. She's much more sensitive than I am, <laughs> and um, I, I'm looking forward to working in this way with her because we do a, a few things socially together but not uh, working together so this will be fun and I'd like to welcome Esther Cummings who was a former planning commissioner that did a, such an excellent job when she was on the commission and if she's available for questions from Rondi that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Rondi. I'm so glad you accepted it. Congratulations, Rondi. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Mayor, if we, can sure. if we can just get a motion and a second on the appointment. Motion and yeah. a second. Okay. Is, can I have a motion? Yeah, motion to uh, approve. 
Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Let's see. Do we have? Do we take? A, can we get something, or do should we just take a voice vote? Good voice yeah. vote. Voting not available. Uh, it's. I don't think it's available. I think we. It need says to take voting not available here. We'll have to take a voice vote then. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Looks like unanimous. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Um, consent calendar, items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine or enacted by a single motion with the exception of items removed by the council members. Can I get a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Second. Thank you. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. It carries. 4-0. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so we got the consent calendar, and let's see what else we got. All right, so we have uh, no items pulled from the consent calendar, no public hearing, no unfinished or continued business, no new business. So we will adjourn the count city council meeting to Monday, February 24th, 2020, at 5.30 p.m. to meet in closed session if deemed necessary. Thank you very much for coming.